Good afternoon to you. Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com, here with your hurricane outlook and discussion for the first day of July 2019. Let's start off with what's happening in the eastern Pacific. We have what will soon be Hurricane Barbara here, just north of 10 degrees north latitude, coming out of the intertropical convergent zone in this area of fertility, moisture, and light shear, good convergence down at the surface where the air comes together. And you can see up on the upper levels, the air is going out. We call that outflow. So it's coming together in this spiral fashion down below and then up and out at the upper levels. Uh, the heat engine alive and well in the eastern Pacific. In the Gulf of Mexico, we did have a flare-up of thunderstorms over in the northwest Caribbean. A lot of that is lifted north and west with time associated with the tropical wave and some other energy in the area. No surface drop in pressures or anything like that. Strong upper-level winds coming out of the eastern Pacific with the favorable atmosphere here. It's probably going to be unfavorable over the Western Caribbean and the Gulf for some time to come because when you're positive here, you're usually negative over here. And once this dies down, the Atlantic usually comes to life. So we have probably, I don't know, four to six weeks until that begins to happen. It's going to seem like forever, which for most people, that's just fine. Uh, but it is a process. It takes time. All right, just looking at the graphical version here, this is Barbara from earlier today. Uh, the, uh, what is that, the 8 a.m. Pacific, so 11 a.m. Eastern Time, almost a hurricane, 70 mile per hour winds, and they have this other area trying to develop off to the east and southeast that will probably go on to become a hurricane over time. And we can see uh, the still shot here from the Hurricane Center there, of course, is Barbara. This is the other area of energy that is trying to get itself together and eventually develop into a tropical cyclone. This one will probably move off more in this direction with time. Barbara going to move off to the west-northwest and then bend back to the west. It does appear. Uh, in fact, we can see that on the GFS here, the 12Z run. At the 850 millibar level of the atmosphere, first of all, let's show you what's what. That's the big island of Hawaii, and this is the rest of the uh, Hawaiian chain there. Oahu sitting over here, uh, Kauai, right, if I have it all, I, I went out there last year, you think I would know all this. Uh, those are the Hawaiian islands, and, you know, obviously, when you have uh, shots being fired at you, so to speak, from tropical cyclones way off the map over here, uh, off of, uh, uh, this is Levi Cowan's site, so just below the power is in your hands, thermoscientific ad, uh, this is where the hurricane is, or the storm is now, and say, so say, well, is it going to make it towards Hawaii? Well, let's take a look. Let's put this into motion. I could have done a GIF animation, but I like to be able to just go through frame by frame. So there's 36, 48 hours. We can go out to 72. So at about hour 90, Barbara starts to come into the shot here, and uh, definitely a hurricane by then. It looks very healthy in the modeling at the 850 millibar level, a very tight vorticity signature, etc. Uh, no reason to think this won't become a major hurricane. So where's it going to end up? Well, here is day five, and by day five and six, it starts to weaken. You see that? You start to lose some of that definition in there. There's the Hawaiian Islands. You move along out here. That's day six. There's day seven really starting to fade now, much, much less energy associated with it. Why would that be? I'm going to show you in just a moment a couple of theories. Uh, let's go on out real quick just to day eight. We'll stop there because that's so far out in time. But there it is, uh, very weak overall, tropical storm probably at this point. So it could bring a change in the weather pattern beyond day eight to the Hawaiian Islands. What that change is... And what those impacts may be remains to be seen. You can bet that if it's a major hurricane through this region, it'll probably be sending out some decent swells that'll eventually reach Hawaii. And so some of the east and southeast facing beaches, and then depending on if this goes to the north, what energy is left with it, you might get some swells that come down and impact the north shore. So there's a few things to watch with this, but I'm not overly concerned because... 
if we look at the shear map, now granted this is current, and we're talking more than a week out, but let's just take a look at what's happening. There's Hawaii, there's Barbara in the green zone. Look at all this red over here that I'm highlighting in yellow. Those are strong upper level winds cutting out of the west and west southwest, and that's not really going to change for the most part. Uh, your band of favorability is much farther to the south, and so as Barbara gains latitude, it'll do so at its own peril. And as it turns, you know, somewhere in this corridor towards the islands, kind of drawing my cone in there, if you will, of you know, those are some. That's a reasonable alley that it could take. What's going to happen? It's going to run right into this zone of shear, which will be fairly permanent. For now, I mean, it's only July 1st. You know, it takes a while for these westerlies to lift more to the north with time. It's just this small area, this cocoon, is favorable. But beyond that, that's why Hawaii doesn't get hit very often. It just, I mean, honestly, they don't call it, you know, the island paradise or whatever for nothing. And there's a reason behind it. So we'll keep an eye on this, but I'm not too concerned right now. All right. Take a look at this, will you? This is the evolution of the subsurface anomalies in the Pacific. Way back just a few months ago, oh my goodness, El Nino is coming. It was here briefly, whatever. Just depends on who you look at, Climate Prediction Center versus the Bureau of Meteorology in Australia. Um, but, you know, we kept watching it here and looking at the subsurface for clues uh, the other data, you know, the, the actual surface temperatures, the anomalies, etc. Well, this is your anomaly at depth right there, equatorial anomaly. This updated most recently here on the 27th of June, and look at what we've got. I mean, that is just down to the bare bones. Now, there is definitely more cold anomaly area than there is warm anomaly. It's been outpaced, all right? So that we could transition towards La Nina, that becomes a possibility, but I don't think that's going to happen this year, and I don't want to jump into that yet. Let's look at what we do have, and as of this update, again, June 27th, this updates every few days, this overall warm pool has really shrunk, and you got a good gap of the eastern Pacific here that's at or below average, and a good chunk of the Western Pacific right at where it should be. But then you go down into the depths, and look at that. Negative anomalies, departures from normal on the cold side over here. So we are losing the El Nino influence from the ocean. It's going to take some time, but it's interesting that this happened before July rolled around. And now that we're in July, we have a full... 30 days ahead of us, 31 counting today, that these effects will continue to diminish. And I think the models will begin to respond, and we should see a slightly more favorable pattern for the Atlantic Basin late August through September into October. That's my theory. Makes sense. Not, a mu not much of a negative influence coming from the Pacific side. So we'll see. Uh, back to this real quick. This is going to be active for a bit. And again, while this is active, we'll put a big plus sign, this is usually negative, usually. Although, I am seeing some rumblings in social media land that uh, towards the next two weeks or so afterwards, let's call it after July 15th, more towards the end of the month, the last third of the month, um, things could start to get interesting in the Atlantic Basin. We'll see about that. Um, you know what? I want to bring this up real quick because I thought I had, yeah, I want to show you this. I forgot to put it up. And so that just stands to reason. Look, this is usually busy, first part of July. Uh, this is usually in an El Nino year that you get all this subtropic development. And we're not in an El Nino year anymore, at least not by my count. Some random development, which is typical of the Gulf, you just never know. Now, though, this first part of July you start getting over history. This goes back to 2015. Uh, this needs to be updated. Hopefully it will soon. But, yeah, you can get these Cape Verde storms that come off these tropical waves, and some of them try to develop. 
over history. You know what any of these are? That one right there is Bertha from 1996, believe it or not. Let's see if I can trace that. It's like being in kindergarten again. Follow the lines, Marky. It came up here and then just ran up the coast like that. Bertha, 1996, as an example. There's another Bertha in there, I think, from 2008 or something like that. I don't know. It didn't, didn't hit land, though. Just roamed around in the Atlantic for a while. Maybe it wasn't this early, though. I don't know. I'll stop talking about it. But this is the chart for the first third of July, as you can see. Honestly, it's just a smattering of development over the course of that time frame. How many years is that? You do the math. It's a lot of years. And you got to go all the way to last year. Add three more to it. All right. Where was I? Let's keep moving along. So um, I'll get to the, let's switch these over. Atlantic temps in a moment. Look at the Gulf of Mexico. Now, this is just nuts. I mean, wow. 30 Celsius all along the nature coast through Florida Bay, etc. You know, dry Tortugas, the Keys. Um, wow. Yeah, Cape Romaine or Romano, whatever it is. I got to get my capes right. Naples, Fort Lauderdale, uh, Fort Lauderdale. Fort Myers, Cape Coral, uh, Tampa, you know, Cedar Key up here, uh, near Homosassa Springs, etc. 29 Celsius off of Mexico Beach, Panama City, Panama City Beach, 29, 30. Well, I'm sorry, 28, 29 Celsius. Bottom line, folks, the Gulf, we say, will always be warm enough. And look at that. Pretty much the entire Gulf of Mexico, uh, statistically speaking, 29 Celsius or higher. Down here near the Isle of Youth, 30 Celsius, or 31 Celsius, sorry, that orangish color. That's just nuts. And let me, when I, wait till you see what I'm about to show you in just a minute. You better be sitting down for some of these next, I don't want to call them slides because this isn't PowerPoint, but these next images, it's coming, get ready. Uh, off the Atlantic coast, uh, for those of you enjoying the 4th of July at the coast, first of all, please be careful. I care about you. I want you back to watch future videos. Does me no good if you can't. So if you are going to the coast, how warm will it be? Uh, again, these surface temperatures, these are actual temperatures, not departures from normal. This is what it uh, is in the water as of June 30th. This gets updated. It's always a day behind. So 27 Celsius along most of southeast North Carolina, the Pamlico Sound, the Outer Banks. Just depends on where you are. 26, 27 and what is that Fahrenheit? We're talking 80, 81, 82 Fahrenheit. Uh, 81, 82, 83 maybe down here along South Carolina's low country into the Savannah River where it dumps into the ocean there near Savannah, Tybee Island, etc. Then 29 Celsius. Oh, look at that. Trying to rear its head and poke its way up through the Gulf Stream there. Nice and toasty. What about folks going out to Belmar? Or down to the Delaware coast. All right. Well, water temperatures just kind of go backwards. There's 26 Celsius, 25, 24 Celsius, so not bad. Low 70s. 23, 22, 21 up here near Long Island. So, you know, 68, 69 to 72 Fahrenheit all along these areas. Not bad, especially if it's 95 degrees uh, inland. You can go to the coast and jump in, and it's 72, 74 Fahrenheit. Enjoy. Uh, no hurricanes to take advantage of this right now. Obviously great news, but now make sure you're sitting down for this next one. You ready? In three, two, one. <laughs> honest to Pete here, people. Yeah, I said honest to Pete. Um, <laughs> I don't know that I've ever seen it that warm that soon. It's just July 1st, for goodness sakes. What is this? This is the upper ocean heat content, and it's literally off the scale. It's white. You almost say white hot, but no such thing as that. Now, the physics behind what we're actually looking at, I may or may not ever cover in a future update, but this is, for our purposes, a measure of how much fuel is in the ocean at depth, not just at the surface. Anything that you start to see outlined in this sort of ghosty color here, right? All of this is decent upper ocean heat content out of the gate. It doesn't mean that there's not any out here. It's just that this is where it starts to really count. 
and then your next layer, even more so. Once you get into this, you can fuel gargantuan strength hurricanes. That water west of Jamaica, around the Caymans, if anybody's down in the Caymans in Jamaica, what is the humidity like down there? Are your dew points just 80 degrees or higher all the time? I mean, holy cow, that is very, very, very warm water. Um, not so much that the surface temperature is like 93 degrees or something. That's not what this shows. This shows the amount of energy that's in the water. In fact, the actual surface temperatures down here are anywhere from 82 to 85 Fahrenheit. And, you know, anywhere from 28 Celsius to about 30 Celsius. But it's how deep that warm water goes that creates this white color in the chart. It's the energy in the water. You can mix it up and there's more where it came from. That's what this is showing. Notice too, off of the Carolinas and uh, Florida, north of the Bahamas, high upper ocean heat content there and it's only July. This could be a problem later on or it may not be, you never know. Now let me get the scale back because I want to show you something. This is 2019. This is what it looked like last year. I mean, come on. We are way ahead of where we were this time last year. No question about it. So let's get rid of that. What about 2017? That's a pretty close match. Well, that, that's almost an oxymoron. That, it's a pretty close approximation, let's say that, not a match. If it was a match, it would be exactly where the same, right? Uh, that's pretty close, a, a close approximation. A few very important differences. In 2017, we did have more heat content way out in the main development region, and you can clearly see that. But I offer this. I don't want to say who cares like I'm being flippant, but as far as hurricanes go, who cares out here? Shipping, yeah, but I mean, you know, once uh, Irma and Maria and Jose and them got over here, that's where it really mattered, right? In the red zone. So what is it like this year? Way ahead of 2017. So yes, you can get your development out here in the main development region where two years ago they would have had a head start, those hurricanes, and they did. But with it being a little bit cooler, I offer you this to ponder and hopefully motivate you in the islands and beyond to be prepared. You look out here and you're hearing people once in a while talk about, oh, the main development region has cooled recently. That's this area right through here. Okay, but the tropical waves are still going to be there. And they come off Africa and they don't develop here. And they don't develop here, but they do start developing over here. Well, guess who lives west of 50 degrees longitude? And even more importantly, except Barbados, you're just on the east side, but 60 degrees longitude, right? All the rest of us. And so unless something pops off early, right off Africa, which comes out over here and, and affects the Cabo Verde Islands, the Cape Verde Islands, we used to know it as the Cape Verde Islands, it matters little except the shipping interest in these shipping lanes out here. But boy, oh boy, look at all that heat content waiting and it's just July 1st. I'm serious. This could be a big problem later on in the season. We're just going to have to wait and see. But I saw that and compared it to last uh, two years ago and last year, and I thought, oh, my goodness, I better address this. So there you go. Look at the Gulf, a little bit warmer this year overall. Yep. All right, enough of that. Real quick, a few people have asked me um, if the documentary was available on YouTube and it is, but it isn't. It is via purchase. You can go to hurricanetrack.com forward slash 2018, and you can scroll down, and we got the PayPal link here, and you can buy it through PayPal, and then I will send you the link myself. And I literally send you the link myself. It's, and it would be nice if I had thousands of people ordering it. Sure, it would help my funding quite a bit. But it's just, you know, a few people every now and then, honestly, and I'm able to, hey, I got an email from PayPal that Joe Smith just bought uh, the, the, DV, the DVD, listen to me, the documentary. And I will literally, hey, Joe, thanks. Here's the link. Enjoy it. Tell me what you think. And if you have purchased it <clears throat> through that method, you can vouch for me that that's exactly what I've done. You can also 
If you don't want to go through the hassle of PayPal, of course, watch it on Amazon Prime Video. That's what they call the service. I know there's included with Prime in the 2017 version. The 2017 documentary <clears throat> is included with Prime. Sorry about the throat. It's a signal to me that I need to shut up and, and finish up. But, um, it's, it's part of Amazon Prime Video, and uh, you can check it out there. L lots of nice reviews, really nice people. Uh, and it's, it's $3.99 to rent, $12.99 to purchase. And it'll be on there for about another 11 months, and then I'll make it available included with Prime. It's the way it is. It's a business. I have to operate as a business. Wouldn't you agree? I already did that, so I'm done. Don't forget, I am hanging out on Patreon as this grows. Hey, we're going to be doing some really neat things with this. I figured out a, a new way to stream live. I talked about this at my last update. I was going to try out something with my old iPhone 8. It failed miserably. But you know what? Failure is your opportunity to learn. And if you can learn and grow and apply those lessons, my good friend Carrie talks about that a lot. Well, you know, you can lessons learned. Great, you learned them, but did you ever apply them? And we did, and we figured out a neat way to stream live going forward that I think is going to work 95% of the time, if not more. And I'm going to debut it and show it to you uh, on uh, Friday, this coming Friday. I'm going to drive up to Surf City, North Carolina, and I'm going to show you. I'm just going to demo it for you, and you're going to be blown away. Uh, I talked about it a little bit on Patreon the other day. And uh, we're actually going to make it available to everybody. We'll talk about it later. But anyway, this coming Friday, a public demonstration of how I turned <laughs> the failure of the iPhone overheating into success. And I think you're going to believe uh, deep down inside, wow, that guy's a genius. Hey, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm a little bit too big of a head for my own good, right? All right. Yeah, we're going to do that on Friday. So listen, I'm going to uh, enjoy some time with the family over the next few days, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Uh, Barbara will not be an issue for Hawaii. Even if it was going to be an issue, it's still more than a week away. So you enjoy the next few days off. Go to Amazon and rent the video, buy the video or whatever. Watch 2017 included with Prime. All those good things. Take in a summer blockbuster movie, not just mine. And be safe out there. I mean that from the bottom of my heart. I appreciate you watching on whatever device you happen to be tuning in from, and I want you here the next time, as in Friday, because Friday I'll do an update, and then Friday afternoon I'm going to jump in my vehicle, and I'm going to show you this new way that I'm going to be streaming, and I'm telling you, it's going to blow you away. You're going to love it. So i got to have you back for that. So be safe out there. Uh, enjoy time with friends, family, etc. But once again, the dad and me, be safe. I am Mark Suddeth for HurricaneTrack.com. Thanks, as always, for tuning in. We will reconvene here on Friday.